Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. What I'm going to be talking about today is the mysterious dark art of mapping a humbucker pickup. Now, what the heck is mapping a humbucker pickup? Well, it's the process of identifying the polarity of the magnets as well as these uh, wires, especially if your pickup came with four conductor wiring, you may find yourself in a situation where you don't know where those wires are coming from and where they need to go. So mapping is a way that we can determine that. And it's critical when you're trying to install a new pickup into a guitar and you want it to be either in phase or out of phase, or you want maybe want to do um, coil splitting, those type of options, you've got to know how to connect these four wires. And the first step in doing that is to map out where they go, where they belong. So I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer. I'm going to show you the tools that we need to do this and how the simple process works. So let's get started. The tools that are going to be necessary for mapping out a pickup are a digital multimeter. And this is just a very basic digital multimeter. As long as it can measure DC resistance at 20,000 ohms, it'll work. Some guys like to use a multimeter that can measure uh, microamps, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick with uh, DC resistance. It's easy to do and a lot of folks will understand it and almost all multimeters can measure DC resistance at 20,000 ohms. So that's what I recommend. And I purchased this one at um, Harbor Freight years ago and I think I paid less than $10 for it. So um, I'll put a link in the description below for either this particular multimeter or, or one that's similar. But you also wanna make sure that the probes have alligator clips. This is useful because the alligator clips allow you to attach the probes to the wires and free up your hand to conduct the other parts of the test. Uh, usually multimeters come with these type of probes and these are a bit more difficult to use because you have to hold the wire to the probe or hold the probe to the wire. That takes two hands and you would need a third hand to actually conduct the test or you'd need to have an assistant to help you. So I recommend getting the alligator clips. And I actually uh, purchased these online and it fit my multimeter. You can also buy clips that snap onto the end of the probes. And sometimes when you purchase a multimeter, it comes with those accessories. So uh, if yours comes with that, you're good to go. Uh, now, if there's another option to using a multimeter, and this is a really useful tool. I've talked about it before. It's fairly specialized and it's meant specifically for testing guitar pickups. This is a guitar pickup phase tester. And what it does is it tests the phase of your pickups, the coils. And that can be useful in you're trying to um, install the pickups to be in phase or out of phase with the other pickups. This device will help you to determine how to wire it up. But it also works for mapping the pickup. So I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, first, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the multimeter. Then I'll come back and I'll show you how this uh, tool works to do basically the same thing. Now, another really useful tool to have for mapping is a polarity tester. And as you can see in the middle of the polarity tester here at this end is a metal bar that has one end painted red and the other end painted blue. Blue is for north up and red is for south up. So when I place the tester over the pole pieces, if the blue end snaps to the pole piece, that means these poles are north up. And if it's red that snaps to the pole piece, that means that these poles are south up. And knowing the polarity can be really important. And that's part of what we're talking about when we're mapping the pickups. To map the pickups, we're going to use the multimeter. And it's really a process of elimination that helps us to figure out where these wires go in this pickup and which wires are positive and which wires are negative. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take the positive clip, the red clip, and I'm going to connect it to this black wire. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to one at a time clip the black clip to each of the wires separately. And I'm going to look to see where I get a response. And when I get a response, I'll know which wire goes with the black wire. So I'll turn on the multimeter. And as you can see, there's no readout. There's no number. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the, this black clip to the green wire. And there's no readout. So we know that the green wire doesn't go with the black wire. So then I will connect it to the red wire. And then as you can see, there's still no readout. So I know the red wire also doesn't go with the black wire. Now the last one I'm going to test is the white wire. And now as you can see, as soon as I connected it, I get a readout. That is the DC resistance of the coil that the black wire and the white wire are connected to. Now obviously at this stage, we don't know which coil those two wires, the black wire and the white wire, are connected to. To find out, we're going to tap the pole pieces with my piece of my ferrous metal um, nut slotting file. And like I said before, you can also use a screwdriver or a butter knife or something like, you know, any kind of steel that's magnetic. So we'll start out by tapping the screw slugs. And what we're looking to see happen is we want to see this number change dramatically. So when I touch it, it changes, but it's not very dramatic. It's only going down a little bit. There's not a big change in that number. So now I'm going to try the other holes and I'll just tap it with the with the metal and see what it does. Now you saw there it dropped pretty dramatically. It went from six and it goes down pretty significantly. So that means in all likelihood the black wire and the white wire are attached to the slug bobbin which if you'll remember when I tested with my um, polarity tester, the, uh, the polarity is north up and then the other one is south up. So we know that the black wire and the white wire go to the south up slug pole bobbin. However, because the number that we see here dropped instead of going up, since it went down, we know that because of the way the clips are attached to these wires, we are reading a negative uh, phase. So what I need to do is I need to switch, and I don't actually have to do this, but I'm, I'm doing it for demonstration purposes, but you would be able to deduce this uh, without having to actually make the, the the switch. But when I connect or when I tap the pole pieces with this metal, that number goes up. Instead of dropping, it actually raises. That means that the way these clips are attached to the wires, we are reading this bobbin as a positive phase. What that means is the white wire is positive and the black wire is negative. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that down because this can get confusing after a while if you're not careful. So I'll write white is positive and that is the north pole bobbin. So then black is negative and also on the North Pole bobbin. Okay, now, common sense will tell you that the green and the red wires automatically go together, and we know that they go to the screw south up bobbin. The only thing we don't know is which is going to be positive and which is going to be negative. So I'll connect the red positive clip to the red wire, and then I'll clip the black negative clip to the green wire. And again, we get our polarity or our 
DC resistance measurement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the screw bobbin or the screw uh, poles with this metal. And we saw that it slightly dropped. See how it goes down? That means I have the clips connected to the wires and showing the phase as negative. So I, now obviously I wouldn't have to do this because I now know that the green is going to be positive and the red is going to be negative, but I'll go ahead and connect them to show you what I'm referring to so that when I tap the poles, the number goes up. So now we know green is positive and red is negative on the screw south up bobbin. So we'll write that down. Green is positive on the south. Red is negative on the south. We have now mapped our pickup. We know what wires go to which bobbin, which are positive, which are negative. From here, you can easily wire up the pickup into a guitar to do whatever it is you want it to do. Now, I'm not going to tell you that there is a specific correct way to wire your pickups into your guitar because there isn't. You can try all different kinds of things. You can wire the two coils together in series. You can wire them together in parallel. You can switch the phasing when you wire the pickup to the controls by making the negative the positive and then the positive the negative. There's just all sorts of things that you can do when you're installing the pickup into your guitar. You can also do some custom uh, applications like phase switching with a switch. You can also use, um, you know, for example, push-pull pots to shut off one of the coils and switch on one of the coils which is the coil split. There's just a whole bunch of different things you can do. It's important to understand that when you wire your pickups into the guitar, you really can't break them unless you, you, you know, damage them with the soldering iron. But as far as connecting those wires, it's either going to sound exactly the way you want it to, or it's not. And then by switching wires around and understanding what the mapping is, you're going to be able to quickly figure out how to achieve the wiring scenario that's going to give you the tone that you want. All right, so let me show you how I make the same uh, measurements using this simple guitar pickups phase tester. And this is powered by a one of these small um, three volt batteries. It's a CR2032. But there's no power running through it until you uh, insert a plug into the jack. This is one of those switching jacks, sort of like you see in a lot of pedals that they don't turn on the power until you install the, the plug. But to use this, you need to have, this is a simple testing harness, and it features a, the same kind of a quarter inch jack or plug that you would find on the end of a guitar cable. Um, but I have two wires soldered into it, a black and a red. The black goes to the ground lug, the red goes to the hot tip lug. And then on the other ends, I have a red alligator clip and then a black alligator clip. And I'm hoping that the, the company that makes this, this tool, and I'll put a link to this company down in the description below, I'm hoping that they will be able to offer this tool with this type of um, testing harness because it doesn't come with it right now and it's really necessary uh, to use this tool. So uh, for now though, you'd have to just fabricate it yourself, which is not that big a deal, but um, you simply insert the jack and you'll see the red light on the negative pops on. That just means it's getting power. And then I'm gonna test these wires the same way I did with the multimeter. But this way with this tool, I think you'll find it's a little bit easier to understand the results than it is trying to watch the numbers on the screen of the uh, multimeter and whether they go up or down. But the first thing I'll do is I'm going to connect the red wire to this black wire. 
and then I'm going to connect the black wire first to the green wire. And then, right now we have no, neither of the LEDs is lit. So what I have to do is tap the pull pieces with my uh, piece of ferrous metal here. And I don't get any signal there. And no signal there. So that means, obviously, the green wire doesn't go with the black wire. So I'll connect the, the black clip to the next wire, which is the red wire. And I'll do the same thing. No signal on that coil and no signal on that coil. So we know that the red wire doesn't go with the black wire. Now we know from the previous test with the multimeter that the black and the whites actually go together. But when, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and test it to see anyways. And I'll touch the screw poles, nothing. Now I'll touch the slugs. And there we get an LED that's lighting up. And in this case, it's the negative. Now when you pull the, the metal off, it's going to give you the opposite re, uh, reading. Sometimes, doesn't always happen, there it goes. We're not concerned with the light that comes on when you pull the, the steel off the uh, pole pieces. We're only concerned with the color of the LED the second you touch the metal, the steel, to the pole pieces. And in this case, it goes red. That means we have found our two wires that go to this bobbin, but we have the um, uh, positive and negative flipped. So we know just looking at it that the white is going to be the positive and the red is going to be the negative. But just to demonstrate that, I'll go ahead and connect the positive clip to the white wire and the negative clip to the black wire. And when I tap the steel to the pole pieces, you'll see that light will come on green. That means we now have this coil uh, as a positive phase. So the white wire is positive, the black wire is negative. And I would then do the same thing with the green and red wire, which we know go together. So connect the positive clip to the red wire and I'll clip the negative clip to the green wire. And I will tap the screw poles and you'll see the light come on. And it comes on negative. Again, I have the phasing switched. So positive, the positive clip will go on the green wire and the negative clip will go on the red wire. And then when I tap it, that light's going to go green. There. So now we know the red and the green go to the screw pole bobbin, which is south up, and the green wire is positive and the red wire is negative. Now, of course, we knew that from testing with the multimeter, but that just kind of demonstrates how this simple guitar phase, guitar pickup phase tester works. It's a pretty cool little tool. It's I think it's easier to read the results than it is with the multimeter. The multimeter can be confusing and you can get inaccurate results. You have to keep tapping to make sure and to confirm what your results are before you can uh, write it down as being the uh, accurate map of the pickup. But by mapping the pickup, I can now, uh, as I said before, install it into the guitar and wire it up the way I want to to achieve the tone and performance that I'm looking for with the pickup, and especially with this pickup in conjunction with the other pickups that, are, that may already be in the guitar. All right, there you had it, pickup mapping. You'd probably never even heard of it before, but it is a valuable uh, lesson and a valuable skill to have because it's going to allow you to plan out the wiring scenario in your guitar so that you can achieve the tone that you're after with minimal frustration. Because if you don't know the map of your humbucker pickup, you're going to have a real tough time trying to figure out how to wire everything together to get the pickup to do what you want it to do. There are so many possibilities here 
that if you wire it up, just you know, a couple of wires in the wrong place, it's just gonna sound weird. It's not gonna give you the tone that you wanted and you're probably gonna be really disappointed in the results, not knowing that if you had wired it up correctly, the tone would be amazing. So I hope that this video was useful to you. If so, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, I hope I've earned your subscription. And uh, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for the next episode.